Welcome to Austin, Texas. Today we're going to dive into liquid cooling. Back in 2008, I put out an industry challenge called the Chill Off. This is where we're looking for creative cooling solutions that would allow us to take full advantage of the computer infrastructure. Now fast forward eight years and I'm in Austin, Texas at the Dell headquarters. And what we're gonna see is a product called Triton. And I believe that is the embodiment of the work that's happened for this last eight years. It's really neat when you can get partners together to tackle the same challenge. When you do that, the magic happens. Let's check it out. How's it going? Hi, how are you? Doing all right? Good. Why don't you tell me the journey you've been on for the last six plus years to come up with this technology? Absolutely. To improve the cooling capacity of a thermal system and improve the efficiency of it, we're trying to close the gap between the heat source and the heat sink, right? right? Ultimately, the heat source is the components within the IT system. The heat sink, the ultimate dissipation point, is the outside air, right? And so today's data centers with a lot of different devices that transport heat from the source into the outside air. Our goal is to close that path so we have the least inefficiencies that stack up on that transport path. In order to do that, we want to bring the, hot, or the, the cooling water in direct contact or as close proximity as possible to the heating device. That way we don't have any losses in, in, in the transport path. Cold plate cooling technology allows us to bring water that is cooled with ambient air outside directly in to the CPU and the server itself. Triton began with a homegrown cold plate solution that we actually milled here in our lab. That allowed us to extract a great deal of data and put that data into an overall total cost of ownership model to try and put together the benefits of, of what liquid cooling would look like for some of our hyperschool customers. We then iterated upon that design into a much more productizable and efficient cold plate layout. So what are we looking at, Austin? So right now, we're standing in front of the third generation Triton product. This is on our G5 server platform. We've got 96 dual socket servers inside of this, this rack. And each one of them is configured into a 12 server 6GU chassis that fits in a 21 inch form factor rack. So now, I'll show you one of the Triton sleds. So as mentioned, each of these blades maintains the same serviceability model of an existing blade, meaning that we can hot plug it without having to have any other condition, consideration for the water that flows in and out of the server. Mm -hmm. And so this is the current generation Triton server. And a couple of things that are unique about this versus our, our previous iterations and some other cold plate technologies that we've investigated, we use welded copper pipes inside of each one of the servers. Mm -hmm. Certainly we have cold plates on the CPUs. And then additionally, we've got leak detection within the server mm -hmm. and an embedded solenoid valve, which gives us the ability to turn off water in the event that there is actually a leak. Got it. So this enables us to, to close off water so we don't have to turn off or disrupt service to any one of the other nodes in the, in the system. Right. And to dumb it down, you've got cold, air com or cold water coming in here. It's mm -hmm. extracting it off of these direct touch plates yeah. and the heat's going back out. You got and it. And these are the leakless connections that you can slide it in just like you plug in power or you got a hard drive or anything. Right? So this sled is currently full of water and as mm -hmm. mentioned, the leakless <laughs> connections allow us to capture that without having any loss of fluid inside of the data center. Right. So serviceability is, ex is just like today's servers. Just like today's blades. Okay, got it. So you build this really cool cooling technology, but what do we actually get from it from a performance standpoint? So we know that increasing the performance of a system also increases the power of that system. Today, that performance and power is limited by the cooling capability of air. By bringing liquid in, we've removed that barrier from how far we can push the performance of the CPU by itself. Mm -hmm. Intel created a high performance 200 watt CPU that could take full advantage of our liquid cooling infrastructure. How does it take advantage of that infrastructure? What the CPU does is actually translates that additional power and cooling headroom mm -hmm. into higher frequencies on the CPU. Higher frequency yields higher performance and better throughput on workloads for most of our customers. So for example, you press the gas pedal down in your car, you go faster. You got it. We now have the ability here because of liquid cooling to go as fast as we need to for the workloads that are gonna be attached to it. Absolutely. Eight years ago, I put a challenge out to the industry to come up with creative cooling solutions that would allow us to take full advantage of the compute infrastructure that we deploy. I believe the Dell Triton is the embodiment of that work. So Austin, thank you very much for all the engineering you've done and you get to become an honorary infrastructure mason's end user. There you go.
Thank you for watching this episode and stay tuned for more. Ah, forget it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>